there's been a very good show this year. I think the crowds have been very good. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the trade day Thursday is not so busy because it's only professional trade people coming to the show. But Friday's been good, Saturday's been good, and today now has become very good. How many um, shows, more or less, do you do per, per year? I do this, I do the Tokyo show, I do the Nagoya in Japan, then I do the Expona in um, mm -hmm. Chicago, in Chicago. Uh, Hong Kong show, which is very important. Mm -hmm. That's the second, second biggest show, I think, now in the world. What is the first one, then? Well, no, this, the is, biggest. This, this is the biggest. This is the now oh, okay. best, okay. number the one. Best. Okay. Um, okay. It's always been like that, or no? It's become. If I, the first time it came to Munich, originally the show used to be Frankfurt, in right? Frankfurt okay. at the Kapinski Hotel, mm -hmm. and it came to Munich something like twenty some years ago. I can't remember the exact date now. It's too long ago. Um, but the first two years was only in Hall Three. Mm -hmm. And they had only containers to play sound booth. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly they managed to get the atriums, the upstairs, where you have the nice big rooms. Do you remember the first time, the first show you, you had? The first what? show here was not so good because it's new. Okay. And you, you, and you, learn. And you were here. Yes. Right? Oh, when, when was it? <laughs> As I said, about 20 years 20 ago. 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, I, okay, yeah, I, can't, I wish I could remember, but it's a, a little over 20. And as I said, it was a little bit primitive, not so good. Mm -hmm. You see, Kapinski Hotel was good because everybody had a room, uh, like a hotel room around the building. Mm -hmm. And it was easy to load because a lot of the rooms were on the ground floor. So they could park their trucks behind mm -hmm. and put things through the window. Okay. Um, but the hotel didn't want the hi-fi anymore because it disrupted their business. I so we, they, the, they the German to, people uh, moved here. Actually, before that, it was in uh, Dusseldorf, mm -hmm. and uh, it used to before be before Frankfurt. It was yes, now. Okay, so this is now 1980, 81. It was in 79, 80, 81. It was in Dusseldorf, or every other year Berlin. They had um, uh, what was called a function, an electronic show, which is. Philips, Telefunk and Grundig nice. and the high-end audio was a little bit of it then suddenly they decided well we don't need the television and all this um, toys will the high-end become separate and move to Frankfurt and then now to Munich and of course this is now I mean so many people here are coming from America from from yeah from the whole world from Indonesia yeah. Malaysia Hong Kong, China. Hong Kong China Japan of course um, very international, that's yes. why it's good, yeah, it's very And that's why it's a good show, because the American show called the CES has gone down and down for uh, audio. It's now only selling gadgets like iPhones. Yeah, I've heard of those, um, yeah. And so those days are finished. So Expona is now the new show in America, mm -hmm. in Chicago, big, right? that. and that's now become very good. And um, when did you start with it? Can you remember the... Well, why audio? Why, why well, well, I've been in the uh, music business and the audio business for fifth, more than 50 years. And why? What happened to you? <laughs> uh, I, well, I was always with rock and roll bands. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And so in South Africa, I was also with rock and roll bands, but I also worked, loved my hi-fi. And so I did both. You know, it's all the same for me, sound, music. and. I got invited to Japan in 1972 uh, and worked for Luxman for four years. And to me, that was a privilege being going to Japan mm -hmm. uh, because they recognized my ability or talent. Um, at the show? Did it happen at the show? Or what, what, no, what I met was... the Japanese president of the company and his um, export sales manager in South Africa. When, because the shop I was doing some consultation to imported their product mm -hmm. to South Africa from Japan and they just said, would you like to come and work for us? Kind of that <laughs> simple. Okay. And it took three, six months to do all the paperwork and the planning. And you moved to Japan? So and I moved to Japan for four years. Of course I met my wife there and that's history. We've been married 40 years. 
She's into music as well, right? Yes. She's very, she loves it. But uh, of course, her um, taste is very, very different. <laughs> well, that's uh, interesting, right? It's, yes. It's nice to have different you know. personalities and Well, tastes. girls always have a different kind of taste to men anyway. <laughs> um, and being Japanese, she heard a lot of Japanese kind of music. It's uh, different. Um, but Actually, I know nothing about Japanese music. What is it about? What's uh, well, there's several kinds. Uh, the old classical with the, well, like your ballet Laika for Russian right. music, yeah. they had the shamisen, which is mm -hmm. a simple, like a, uh, like a, a stringed instrument, mm -hmm. but it only has three strings. Okay. And it's very Chinese sort of sound. I see. And that's their traditional music. Then they've got the, the drums with the koto and the, uh, the taiko. And rock music. And then, but most of the Japanese, of course, don't follow rock music. I see. And Japan has been a sophisticated market for ever. I mean, in Japan, you could buy any kind of music in Tokyo mm -hmm. or Osaka, even 50 years ago. It didn't matter whether it was the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. The Beatles are still number one in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, or. Greek music, they like Greek music they or Italian or whatever kind of folk, every kind of music you could buy in Japan. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a narrow... Yeah, that is interesting, um, yeah, they love it, yeah. Very and um, so to this day, the Jap and of course you have these big concert halls in Japan, so big bands come from Europe all the time. They, even they also love classical music. Which of is course, yeah. not, yes. It, not, not, in Europe it's not like that, I no. guess. They are, they really love yes, it. Really and sweet. you've got uh, orchestras coming from Europe to mm -hmm. Japan, but you've also got, of course, the bands touring, like um, Queen, when they were, before Freddie Mercury died, mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, uh, any kind of band would come to Japan. And um, still today, you get all these bands coming for tours. Then they have now in Japan, thing called the Fuji Rock Festival. It's not near Mount Fuji, but it's a, 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 a northern a, a northern town in the mountains. And they have a bit like England has Glastonbury, very famous yeah, yeah, yeah. music. They have four sound stages in the valley. So different bands can play at the same time and all the fans can choose. And it's a three-day event on a weekend, and they get many foreign bands coming to this fest, Fuji Rock Festival. Um, and, yeah, they're very much into music. And so they, yeah, they love it, and uh, yeah. you know this is what and Japan loves jazz. Miles Davis or Bill Evans, all the classical jazz artists the Japanese are mad on. And of course, they, a lot of these jazz people came to Japan for tours. Um, so Japan is a very sophisticated. I mean, as I say, so it's difficult like, to enter the, the Japan, yes. Isn't it? And the audio mania in Japan was so much more passionate than the Western country. When I was at Lux in Japan, I would visit some of these people's homes where they had exotic horn speakers and two or three turntables and tape machines and whatever. Um, so they really were passionate about their music. And so, as I said to you, like the, I showed you the other day, the recording tapes, the Japanese were yeah, uh, making um, professional 15 inch, 38 centimeter, uh, real, open reel tapes of, uh, well, mainly Japanese music but it was always what they call a master grade. Are they coming back to it now as well? It's, or how uh, do you see it? Do people many, want to go yeah, back they're, to they're, it? they're thinking about it. The, the trouble is that the old people have now are no longer with us, and we're trying to find a new, the young people to bring into it. Mm -hmm. um, because sadly, after 60 years, a lot of the people are dead now, of the, that yeah, generation. I know, I know. Um, but it was Japan was so... Uh, head of the Western world for taste that audio fans would spend whatever it took to get that piece of music that was so pure, better than anything they could buy on a normal record or a, tape, a cassette. And 
the, Br the British or the European would never dream of spending on that. So your people are trying to at least bring back this um, high quality music. And Do you think it has future? It has a future in a small scale. You're not going to sell thousands like a record. But even in Japan they didn't sell thousands, but they sold hundreds easily. And Tate Project I consulted to in America, yeah, he's an old that. friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And so you guys, bringing more and more together. If the price is reasonable, I think we can bring more young people into it. Or more gen new generation. And, and new music, I think, yes. is also important. Yes, too. it's got to be exciting, it's got to be good music, interesting. Um, some of your stuff, the avant-garde, is a little bit hard for a lot of people to understand. Well, yeah, but it's nice to have something different, yes. right? I think. Yeah, exactly. Because you can't, you But know. it's beautifully recorded. Oh, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> it's just that it's a, what we call in English, eclectic, meaning... Uh, yeah, I know, yeah, uh, of course. It, it, yeah, it requires a yes. place, you know, it's, yes. not, it's not easy to um, understand. But the, the other jazz records are very good and very easy, appealing, very easy to listen to. Mm -hmm. and if you can get that balance of the music plus the, the quality, I think that's Skin great. Thank uh, you so much. Of course, Tape Project's doing uh, original masters of uh, like Miles Davis and so on, mm -hmm. because he can get access to the original classic, famous stuff. Um, May I ask you about the audio industry? Like, why do people do that? <laughs> why do people spend so much money on that? Uh, well, a small number of people will spend to get now to get the what I call the taste of the real sound, mm -hmm. the original master. They want to hear that studio sound, and the, the cassettes were never very sounding good. Small seven-inch records were never very good and only LP and digital. We've had CD now since 1982, uh, 83. So, nearly 40 years of CD, mm -hmm. but lots of people were dissatisfied with the sound of the digital. And so, it, this is why in the last five yeah. years, people are beginning to go back to vinyl because they understand it. The big other thing for the young rock fans, vinyl is a nice big package, easy to read the um, information, but even if they don't have a turntable, they own a part of this band, you know, whatever their band is, if it's Queen or whatever, oh, I've got this band, by David Bowie or whatever, and um, whereas a download, you have nothing. If you didn't download yeah, from the, yeah, the, 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 the cloud, you have no. You can't, yeah. You can't, you can't taste touch it. it. You can't taste uh, it. Yeah, it's, it's like a book. A yeah. book yeah. you have. Yeah, a, it's an experience. It's an yeah, experience. It's exactly. And, and so it, these young people need this experience. And so vinyl is becoming established again. It was nearly dead five years ago. I've been tr trying to set up a pressing plant in Japan to press vinyl. And. Um, didn't go well? Um, well, no, we had a disaster, economic disaster, uh, because of the weather. Um, but it, I'm still going to get it there. Um, but I'm so setting. Want it, want it yes, one? yes. Because there's not enough capacity for vinyl at the moment. There's not an, uh, because all the classic plants are destroyed and broken and sold their machines. And so there's too little left to make the vinyl. And when you've got a popular like um, the White Stripes, mm -hmm. uh, Lazarus, yeah. you know, and you're selling a hundred thousand records, you need the production. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that kind of stuff you cut. It's not vinyl. Has got like CD the one advantage: you can put your needle straight onto a tune quickly. Okay. Tape has the only problem: it takes time to work. Right. It's another experience. But it's another experience, so that's why we play the tapes from do the beginning. Do you take the machine everywhere? Yes. The really, yes. Every, every show you yes. do with the machine. Yes. And what is a good setup for you? What What is the main the setup? Like the speakers? What should they well, do? What do you feel like? Well, in so our case, good? we've used uh, various companies like Graham Acoustics, mm -hmm. um, and this year we're using the Rockport. Um, it's important that my room is one of the top sounding rooms. Mm -hmm. 
and my electronics makes other speakers sound good. So I, I take a pride that my equipment is better than most. It may not be the most expensive, it doesn't have to be, it's got to be just... Sound is my whole life. But it's not about money, right? It's no, it's, it's, it's sound. It's sound always. And I want and my room to sound good and I've always had one of the best sounds but in the world. But how do you feel it? What, do you, what is, what is uh, you understand that that's perfect? So yes. Emotions, and, right? Yes. So, and uh, I hope that the people who come in and sit down can uh, take away that experience and come and find, go to a dealer in Germany or wherever to buy our product. That's my hope. Okay. And uh, it works like that. But I, I don't do, I never follow other people. I never, I've yeah. always been, what I call, a bit of an outsider, an outsider <laughs> unique. Um, and the same way with tapes. I have, had a lot of experience for many, many years, and I worked with professional. I built equipment for people like uh, David Gilmore of Pink Floyd um, because they still... like sound. They, they, a lot of music, rock bands do care about the sound of their music. Yeah, they really so do. Yes, they so they have should. A, yes. They should. Some of them don't care, but some do. And um, Pink Floyd has been selling albums for. 40 years, number one, 50 years, you know, Pink Floyd has been a huge, every year they sell hundreds of thousands or millions of records. What kind of machines do they record? Well, they record on all their t studio tape machines studio. in their re studio. Mm -hmm. I modified yeah. all of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> but they care about the sound and, um, you know, they have so many fans worldwide that they yeah, can sell their records everywhere. That it's, uh, and, of course, they're bootlegs, which is a different kind of business, where people don't care about quality, they just want to hear the band playing in some, uh, like in, um, um, in where did they, they played in Rome in Italy and things like that. Um, but. Vinyl is an easy format that's very high quality to get people to understand music. Tape is a little bit more difficult to make them appreciate. But I'm fighting all the time. That's wonderful. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you so much for doing and that. And as I say, um, doing a I was pleased to lend you my machine because I wanted oh, you so to, to get a good sound. Um, the sound. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, as I say, we've played some of your tapes in the room and people get that experience. Um, yeah, that's why I would go to the show, actually, yes. to get an experience. And you know, to, to have some what you should do is come to the Japanese show. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. It's, it's a, because software is different to hardware for doing a show in Japan, because it's a closed society. I know that, yeah. In Japan, we are on the one of the committees it says who can we allow to come to exhibit or not but software is different it's a very different um, um, not so strict because of course people then like magazines the Japanese audio magazines and uh, jazz magazines and so on they're always at the shows selling magazines and make, I don't know uh, how many thousands of people come to that show I have no memory but, uh, yeah, it's, it is my dream to go there. Yeah, Maybe. the Hong Kong show in August is also so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's always booked, I know, in, in advance, right? It's, it's, it's hard to get together. space. Yes. Because the Hong Kong show, you have 27,000 people come to that show in three days. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and they have a lot of money there. Yes, <laughs> I mean, 27,000 oh people. That's that is huge. Amazing. Yeah, you know, I know that. Whereas some of the shows in America, you're lucky to get 2,000, you know. Um, and that's, this show gets 17 to 18,000 mm -hmm. coming to here. Well, so, I think the number is growing. And right? it's growing, area, yes. So, that's so I think that's number three in the world. Yeah, for, so, okay. for, I know Poland is coming up. Poland, Poland was, a, you know, for, there, there were only two decks, two yes. little two machines in the whole show. So yes. they're, you know, beginning. Yeah, beginning, um, but anyway. And of course there's the Moscow show, which I've never been to, but we have a distributor in Russia. Yeah, for our we know equipment. that, yeah. But I've never been to them. It's not that big now. It's, it's not, not that, that big. No, no. Um, it's not international at all. So no, expensive. that's but a problem. <laughs> not many people can get Maybe to Russia. Maybe I can change it one day. Yes. Um, 
you know, it, well, Finland has a show, but it's also tiny because it's people. It's too far from people. Then um, St. Petersburg. Um, I don't think they have any shows. No, there. they no, don't no, yet. No, it's all in Moscow. Um, Stockholm, a Swedish, uh, has a little bit, but they're not major. They're just small for that area. You're not going to get foreign people coming easily. So it's this one. Um, Expona, Hong Kong, Tokyo, uh, they're the big shows that are international and the rest are sort of lower yeah. down. But as I said, the Hong Kong show is so busy and you should be able to sell a lot. There's a company that was running a, a so-called copy master called ABC from China. Yeah. But they didn't have licenses to sell that music. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the big headaches. Yeah, if you haven't a got a no, permission, a of, yeah. if you haven't got a permission from the record label or the um, artist, of course, no, then it's, it's illegal. Person, especially internationally, yes. no, you can't do that. I because you have to be very, very strict, strict yeah, and pay, know, um, pay the license. play the rules. And take project. I know he pays the rule. Um, that is important, right? So yes. you can't do that without because then it's, if it's a, if it's legal. Nobody can touch you. you know, they can't say you're stealing our yeah, music, yeah, yeah. and that's a, a, an important factor. So this ABC, they were cheating, and um, I don't know how long they will last. You know, and they weren't recording to the proper standards either. The guy who does Tech Project, he's been in the music business for 40 years. He's had a recording studio in, the, in um, San Francisco, recording big artists and stuff. So he's been professional for a long, long, long time. So, and he's met a part of the membership of the Grammy Award ceremony. People oh. uh, voting has a power to vote. Um, yeah, I've been to the Grammy show in America. Too. So I'm lucky. I'm doing both professional and uh, the consumer. Well, we have. We need to talk more yes. the next time. Thank you exactly. so much. Exactly. We have to get so we'll Sunday. That. We have. Yeah. We don't have. Thank That's you so much. Uh, thank it was you. wonderful. Thank you for the machine. Thank you. Thank you so much. It. So next time. Yes. <laughs> okay. We'll next continue. time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.